I'm sitting in Bluebird, my MGTF, and I've got a problem with the heater blower motor. And this is actually quite a common problem in MGTFs. The speeds are controlled by resistors. The switch puts the resistors in series, so the speed depends on how many are switched in. Speed 4 has no resistors switched in. Speed 3 has 1. Speed 2 has 2 and speed 1 has 3. Well, speed 1 doesn't work, so one of the resistors is faulty. I need to have a look. The internet suggests I should first remove the glove box. There it is, complete with a light. So I'll need to look out for electrical connections when I remove it. Then there are two screws to be removed, here and here. And underneath there's another two screws, but they've just to be slackened off to let the box slide out. So let's go. First, disconnect the battery. Next, empty the box. Then, slacken the screws. One and two. And remove the other screws. One and two. Keep the screws safe. Slide out the glove box and there's the wiring. Now it's a good idea to mark up the sockets and wires so that they can be properly reconnected. So now they can be undone but with some difficulty. With the glove box out of the way I can search for the panel with the resistors. It's black, it has a multi-plug and it has two screws. Well, I can't see it. Again, the internet suggests removing the air duct. A 10mm socket works here. When the nut is removed, the duct can be wriggled out. Well, now I can see the panel with the plug. It's really inaccessible. Look where it is. I've managed to remove the plug which is hanging down, but it's not clear how I can get in to unscrew the screws. I think it's time for a cuppa. Well, here's how I get in. So this is the component removed. This is the controller for the blower motor. And when you turn it over, you can see that there are three resistors. Just going to remove the screws before I lose them. And here's the one, here's the one here that's the problem. It's actually broken. It's broken in the middle. I don't know if we can show that better. It's broken just in there. So that needs to be replaced and I've actually got three ceramic resistors ready to go in there. Now I'm in the workshop. I have to desolder the resistors. I'm doing this with a 100 watt soldering iron to quickly melt the existing solder and let me pull out the resistors. And this leaves a lot of solder in place so I can use that later. I'm now putting in the new ceramic resistors. They're not going to burn out in place. I heat up the solder and push the wires down into the molten solder. When it's cooled, I make sure that the joint is secure. Actually, I should have left the connecting wires longer to make refitting in the car easier. Right, so I'm going to see 
whether my soldering has worked now by testing the various circuits. I think this might be the earth. And there's circuit one, so there's a current going through that. Circuit two, there's a current going through that. Circuit three, we've got a current going through that. So that would indicate perhaps that the soldering has worked. Now, let's just see if we can test the actual resistance. Where are we here? There we are. So, if I assume that that's the earth again, and we go there, what's this settling at? I don't really know what that's settling at. Is that 15 ohms? No, it's not. It's 0.15 ohms, perhaps. And then the next one. Point one six ohms, and the next one is point two two. Well, it's all a bit strange. Just have to put it back in the car and see what's what. It works. And so does the glove box light. Actually, I did wire the resistors up before I refitted everything to make sure it was okay. I really didn't want to have to disassemble everything again. Now, if you have to do this job, it's a good idea to follow this video. I had a good look at the workshop manual, and I just couldn't figure out how their method could possibly work.